something that I noticed, and I think a lot of other people were noticing as well, was that a lot of these girlies who were on the cover of the perm boxes wasn't even getting perms. So it's funny because the four, three C hair people were also were the people on the perm box, but three C hair people were also the people on the as the face of the natural hair movement. It's wild. Sometimes it don't make no sense. Does it really have to? There is nothing I can say. Hi, welcome to Maya's world. Hi everyone. Um so I want this video to be pretty quick because this was something that I saw on the internet that was going around trending a couple, like a week ago, a couple weeks ago, about how the girlies, they, people started this tweet where they were like, hey, if you guys had natural, um, if you were on the perm box, show us where you are now. And a lot of these girls were showing pictures of them. You know? Something that I noticed, and I think a lot of other people were noticing as well, was that a lot of these girlies who were on the cover of the perm boxes wasn't even getting perms. And, you know, it's fun. I'm laughing. I'm like, oh, I remember that girl. But really, when I think about it, it's making me mad. Yeah, it's making me mad. Because, listen, we were going through hell. We were burning our scalps. Like I literally remember being a kid praying I looked like the girl on the cover of the perm box. I was so confuzzled by why my hair wasn't doing what the girl on the perm box's hair was doing. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just the people I talked to, but every friend I had who had 4C, very kinky, dense hair, as soon as we permed our hair, we would lose so much of our hair. Like. Perming does not make everyone's hair look straight and silky. Like, perming made my hair look really dry. I'll see if I can even find a photo. Don't laugh at me. If you laugh at me, you anti-black. But perming was not good for me or my friends who had hair texture similar to mine. And perming really made me think that I just naturally had thin hair, which is so funny because my hair is really, really thick. I was taking biotin vitamins trying to get thicker hair. Meanwhile, it's the perm that's making my hair thin. And it wasn't until I started to see them as adults that I was seeing a lot of these girls had a 3C hair texture and it was just blown out and straightened. It was just blow dry, blown out and straightened and put on the cover of a perm box. And then you have me, a 4C, a 4C baddie in the making at 5, 8, wanting the same thing that these girls was having. Meanwhile, it's not even achievable. And it's funny because when I started doing um, more work about colorism and texturism, I saw this commercial of Debbie Allen where she was promoting perm. And girl, you have a loose curl. You, don't, you are not perming your hair. That was not a perm. But I feel like there is historically a thing where you get people who benefit from texturism you straighten their hair and then you sell it to people who are affected by, by texturism. So you're having us chase an image of something that essentially isn't going to be possible. And for a lot of us, perming our hair had our hair come smooth off. It's very funny for me because, you know, I used to perm my hair and I would lose my hair so much. My hair would fall out in bulks. And even just normalizing the pain that comes with perming, that's another thing that people, you know, in the, this concept of like the longer you keep it in, the more it hurts, the straighter it will become. Something very psychologically <laughs> warped about how perming is and not to mention the dangers that it, it brings us. And all of us were doing these things to chase an unachievable thing. And this is why I always talk about discernment on my channel, because it's very important for us to have discernment and for us to be very careful with what we consume. Yes, looking back, these are things that were big in the 90s and 2000s. These were girls who we were seeing on the perm box in the 90s and 2000s. But now I still see the same things happening, especially with the natural hair movement and how people were always selling us um, products they know damn well. 
They know damn well it's not doing nothing in the hair. We was using so many products that we were. I I remember when I was had a loose had I had when I had loose forcey hair. So before I my hair locked, I would um, loose forcey hair. I was doing like a twelve step. <laughs> conditioner then a conditioner then a deep conditioner and a special shampoo and then a lotion and then oh my god and like the real gag the real tea is if you have forcey hair you're trying to manage your forcey hair literally all you need is like shea all you need is like water and some kind of butter like something like for me shea butter works just something to detangle it like you don't need all the products they're selling you and for me when i started my channel i had a lot of companies hit me up to try and sell products and i always just found it to be very comical because the whole point of 4c hair is that you don't need products of course you can have your own little special shampoo if you want you can have your own like everything works different for different people but of what is being sold like it's just th there's more invested for people to make money selling you things that they don't really use than there is for them to tell you the honest truth that you just really don't need it so that's why I always say with watching people on here, just be very careful and very weary of what they show you. So it's funny because the four, three C hair people were also were the people on the perm box, but three C hair people were also the people on the, as the face of the natural hair movement. It's wild. So you know what I think was one of the biggest downfalls within the natural hair community? The rhetoric that became so normalized of saying that 4C hair is so hard to take care of, natural hair is so hard to take care of. Because think about it. If you have created a system that you make people feel like you need 12 steps, you need all these products that are incredibly expensive, that only when you have those products will your hair finally do what it quote unquote should be doing. If that has become the rhetoric, then what that subconsciously tells us is that our hair is something that has to be managed and has to take a lot of steps and takes a lot of energy. Not only are we making people feel like they, that they need to have products to have um, acceptable hair, but then also we, at the same time we were telling people that only when your hair is in a braided out, in a twist out, in any kind of style where it's not in its shrunken state, is it considered beautiful? If the natural hair movement had flipped its formula to where you are celebrating or we had celebrated kinky hair in its shrunken state, which is the healthiest state when you have 4C hair, your healthiest state is when your hair compresses into itself because that's how kinky hair works. If we had taught people to celebrate that part, we would have a completely different out outcome we wouldn't have people saying oh my hair is too takes too much to manage because who taught you that your hair took a lot to manage i mean i know who taught you but you know what i'm saying and a lot of these companies when they found out that black hair you know a lot of these companies that own black hair aren't even own, aren't even like owned by black people when these companies realized that black people was needing hair products they started just i feel like they just started making up stuff they just started making up oh yeah you gotta have y'all saw that even marcel even with locks she tried it with the locks the lock community was like absolutely not you are not about to come over here lying on this internet saying that you need 15 products like that they, they did that in the natural hair community and these in these companies that never cared about black people started making all these products and it's the same i feel like a lot of these products were the same things that white people were using but they just made it in brown <laughs> they just made it for an urban demographic i don't actually believe they changed much in the formula i think they just started making things because they started to realize that black people want, needed to buy hair products so i feel like the 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 extension of what happened with perms right? You know how perms is like, you need this one product to get this outcome. Then the natural hair community ended up being, you need, you need to buy these many products to have this once again, one outcome. And, and which is essentially everyone striving towards 3C hair because everyone in the natural hair community was striving towards making their hair look looser. So these are the things that went wrong in the natural hair community that ended up that ended us back to where we are. And I still feel like we're having conversations even within the lock community. I'm seeing a lot of people finally addressing the texturism that happens between when people sometimes, when people have manicured locks and they look down upon people who have freeform locks or people who look down upon people who have shorter locks versus longer locks. Like we're having this conversation, but these things are embedded in all communities and they're all rooted in anti-blackness. So now that people are going back to perming their hair, I'm seeing a rise of people going back to perming their hair. I'm now seeing that 
the people who are going back to perming their hair is a lot of people who have 4C, who were made fun of, who were made to feel smaller than. And something that I didn't like within the natural hair movement is the way that we would really shame people for not wanting to wear their natural hair out. Like I remember so many dark skinned people who have 4C hair and when they wear a wig, people are like, well, you don't love yourself. Just like a really simple simple analysis of why they wouldn't show their hair but then when you have your 4c hair out you're, you're getting made fun of and people want to tell you about what you need to do differently about your hair like still to this day we, we have so many videos of people laughing at particularly dark skin 4c hair people people with kinky hair that's still a butt of a joke for a lot of people it's really upsetting and i feel upset that we were buying these perm products and and hurting ourselves because perming not, is actually painful and we are hurting ourselves to have a looser hair texture that just isn't that isn't natural. <laughs> we were doing so much and it, it really damaged a lot of people. Like, even though I'm making jokes, like perms, a lot of these perms, especially with the idea that we're buying into something that isn't real, like it really hurt people. And we're continuing to hurt them now. And when people going back to perms, I'm just like, Listen, I can't, I'm not going to get mad at you because I understand the system and I understand how painful it is, but it really is upsetting because the people who are going to, you know, I think people are trying to make it into some kind of new reclamation or make it seem as if it's really radical to go back to having perms or it's, it's just like, we're trying to assimilate. Like I get it. It's, it's hard, but yeah, it's, it's it's sad. So I don't I I see that the trend is going back, and I think a lot of it happens to like the failings that naturally occurred within the natural hair movement, the prioritizing of people with three C hair, the idea of stretching your hair to then bantu knot it. A couple like something that I also find really interesting about four C hair. I see a lot of people doing four C hair, and it, they're always using so much force, and it kind of reiterates this idea that like you only force or violence or or power is can be used to tame 4c hair and it really doesn't have to be like that like if you're having resistance you need to add more water and in life like even on a deep way that's a lot like th things should not be resisting the way that it is because it can easily like let's take our time let's add water let's add softness i really enjoy like i love this person online their name is the sudani and they do their hair and they just do it with so much softness and tenderness and that is really what is like 4C hair is about like the softness, the tenderness, the the prioritizing the scalp, the prioritizing, you know, healthiness over always stretching it out. We were stretching out our hair so much to achieve a 4A hair texture, a 3C hair texture, to where now people are getting texturizers to change their hair to like a 4C, a 4A hair texture. Like the root of the problem was never really addressed because we were so fixated on the shininess of, of, look bouncy curls like for three three c hair texture i say this to say that we were really perming our hairs for an unachievable look and like we're low-key going back to that now let me know what you think if you guys have been seeing if you also have noticed a rise in people wanting to go back to perms and how did y'all feel when you saw these little girlies and they was washing go girls how was y'all feeling because me me i'm mad i'm mad yeah yeah mad so yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.